we will discuss fiscal policy professor santosh nandan what is fiscal policy fiscal policy deals with the revenue and expenditure of the government the word fiscal has been derived from the word fisc which means public treasury or government funds means policy hai jo revenue aur expenditure ko deal karti hai kiske sarkar ke usko hum kiska naam dete hain fiscal policy ka naam dete hain isko revenue and expenditure policy bhi keh sakte hain objectives of fiscal policy these are objectives of fiscal policy higher economic growth price stability reduction in inequality always this is the foremost objective of fiscal policy because in developing country there is a crisis of higher economic growth and always government keeps target through which more and more or the speed of economic growth can be higher second foremost is just to control or to put more taxes or to lose money supply or to tight money supply second one is price stability so always there is a big concern of fiscal policy big objective of fiscal policy ki how the prices can be stable sthir kaise rahe ki reduction in inequality reduction in inequality because the government imposes taxes in such a way so the income can be distributed equally and there should be no much gaps between rich and poor to is hisab se jo tax hai wo sarkar lagati hai taki jo gaps hai logon ke income ke beech mein unko kya kiya jaye kam kiya jaye the objective which we have discussed so that can be meet out with these ways what are these ways first one consumption control if consumption will be controlled what will be happening ratio of saving will be high ratio of saving to income because y is equal to c plus s income is equal to consumption plus saving and when we have the less money spent on consumption then what will be happening the saving will be higher or if the saving will be higher the ratio with saving to income that will be raised also raising rate of investment there is a relationship between these two because when the saving will be higher automatically investment will be higher also because there is a direct relationship between saving and investment taxation infrastructure and development so all these objectives we had discussed so through the taxation and through the infrastructure development if infrastructure development will be higher what will be happening speed of higher economic growth or the economic speed of economic growth will be increased through the taxation we can reduce the gaps between the rich and poor between the income inequalities among people imposition of progressive tax progressive taxes however we will uh, discuss laterly but uh, one we can say that because uh, progressive taxes means higher tax on higher income group people and lower tax on lower income group people just we are putting more tax on the luxury goods and other goods exemption from the taxes provided to the vulnerable classes so those vulnerable means those uh, who have the uh, uh, low level of income so or they don't have uh, income so they can in a position to pay taxes so exemption is given these classes heavy taxation on luxury goods luxury goods because luxury goods normally that is used by the higher income group people so more taxes on uh, these luxury goods discouraging unearned income this is also one of the the objective we were discussing of fiscal policy so the unearned income so that must be discouraged now we will discuss components of fiscal policy 
there are three components of fiscal policy government receipts through the you can say about the revenues of the government government expenditure the government is spending money uh, from these receipts as well as from by borrowings from banks or the from other sources and the third one is public debt so all these three are this is in the form of the taxation or other income plan and this is the expenditure may be planned and non planned and this is the public debt you can say borrowings and liabilities aspirants should note that all the receipts and expenditures of the government are credited and debited from the followings how this consolidated funds of india contingency fund of india and public accounts of india so all these receipts and expenditures they are क्रेडिटेड एज वेल डेबिट क्रेडिट का मतलब जमा होता है डेबिट का मतलब उसमें से घटते हैं जब हम एक्सपेंडिचर करते हैं तो ये ऑल थ्री अकाउंट्स हैं जहां पर ये दोनों डेबिट भी होते हैं और क्रेडिट भी होते हैं नाउ वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट गवर्नमेंट रिसीट्स विच आर गवर्नमेंट रिसीट्स फर्स्ट वन इज ए रेवेन्यू रिसीट दिस इज अ टैक्स रेवेन्यू गवर्नमेंट इम्पोज टैक्सेज और वो टैक्सेज कौन कौन से हैं डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज एंड डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज है एंड डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज आर इंक्लूडेड जी एस टी एंड ऑल दैट एंड सेकेंड वन इज नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू सो दैट इज नॉट लेवल्ड टैक्सेज ऑन द इनकम ऑफ पीपल बट दस ए फीस लाइसेंस परमिट्स फाइन्स एंड पेनल्टीज सो गवर्नमेंट इज टेकिंग सम फीस दैट इज अ नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू नॉट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टैक्स लाइसेंस और सम परमिशन इज गिवन टू दैट देर चार्जेज ऑफ इट and some fines or some penalties are imposed and the money is collected from that that is also receipt but is a non tax receipt second one is capital receipt loan recovery disinvestment borrowings and other liabilities these are also the receipts but these are the capital receipts not from the income because the government takes loan for the recovery or to uh, fulfill the vacuum of the public debt disinvestment by uh, selling the shares of public sector in the hands of the private people that is uh, called disinvestment and borrowings that is uh, taking borrowing from some banks and all that and there are some other liabilities the government has to pay for that this is a uh, first one was a recovery here yeah, loan recovery now what are government expenditure the government expenditure as revenue expenditure it is recurring expenditure so what is uh, recurring expenditure which we are talking about that uh, because day to day cost of any company that is in the business activities in the administrative expenses these are all the recurring expenditures and in the recurring expenditures interest payments defense expenses salaries to central government employees these are examples of the revenue expenditure capital expenditure uh, in the previous slide we talked about that these are a capital receipts loans recovery disinvestment all borrowings and here we are discussing capital expenditure it's a non uh, recurring expenditures we can say that non recurring this is the unexpected expenditures or the profits loss some lawsuits some the Uh, maybe uh, for hiring of advocate or some provisions made about regarding to settle the law related issues restructuring of any building or these are taken only once and that can be taken the whole year also so these are the loan repayments in the capital expenditure loans to public enterprises so i think it's very much clear recurring about the day to day expenses to fulfill all that about the administrative cost or the other cost of the company uh, but the non recurring is that way you can say like that uh, this say unexpected expenditure that can be that can be done only once the cost is taken only once and that is about the restructuring or about any profit loss or some lawsuits that is in the uh, capital expenditure what is fiscal consolidation the measure that are taken to improve improve fiscal deficit comes under the process of fiscal consolidation so what is fiscal consolidation that is to improve the fiscal deficit so that is uh, and uh, the measures which we are taking to improve it that is called the fiscal consolidation 
through fiscal con, uh, consolidation the government tries to improvement in revenue receipts. So, the revenue receipts that can be improved more we can collect more revenue better alignment in public expenditure. So, ex public expenditure uh, government makes expenditure on the for the public goods just like the transportation infrastructure or other kind which can be uh, of uh, other kind of uh, goods which are used by by every people. Fiscal federation federalism it refers to the distribution of resource be between center and states because fiscal federalism there is a uh, such kind of the taxes that are distributed uh, states and center. The distribution of the taxes between center and states is mentioned in seventh schedule of Indian constitution and there are three lists one is a union list union means center government and the second one state all the states and the concurrent list means both the uh, center and state both are independent of each other. So, some taxes that is uh, only to the union center government some taxes to the state government and that is both are independent to each other in the concurrent list center and state. Now, types of fiscal policy a first type of fiscal policy is expansionary fiscal policy and what the situation in expansionary fiscal policy government spending kya hai government spending is greater than taxation 80 percent or taxation kya hai 20 percent or smaller than spending taxation is smaller spending is higher usko hum kiska naam dete hain expansionary fiscal policy ka naam dete hain second is fiscal neutral policy neutral means dono barabar hain government spending or jo taxation hai 50 percent 50 percent to government spending is equal to taxation and taxation is equal to government spending. So, that is uh, your fiscal neutral policy. Contradictory fiscal policy contradictory ek dusre ke vipreet hai government spending government spending is greater than expenditure taxation is greater than government spending. So, both are contradictory to each other suppose the taxation government is getting 70 percent to their spending 30 percent. Suppose, if the government is getting 30 percent spending 70 percent the both are contradictory to each other that is called contradictory fiscal policy. Now, we will discuss difference between fiscal and monetary policy. Monetary policy whole note is available on my channel professor Sandosh Nandar you can see it. Uh, fiscal policy what the motto of fiscal policy and what is the motto of monetary policy. Fiscal policy uh, specifically for the ex receipt and expenditures and the receipt means we are talking about the tax rates and about the expenditure means spend, uh, spendings change in government spending and tax rates change in interest rates money supply. So, monetary policy is specifically just to about the how the money supply can be controlled or can be uh, enlarged uh, by change in interest rates. So, depending on the situation of country at that time this is set by government fiscal policy and the monetary policy set by central bank and the RBI is a central bank of our country. Fiscal policy there is no any specific target because we are talking about the receipt and the expenditures how the receipt can be increased and how the expenditure can be monitored. But in monetary policy always there is a target of inflation ki how the inflation can be controlled. Side effects on government budget borrowings, side effects on exchange rate and housing. So, what are the side effects of fiscal policy on the government budget about the borrowings? You will see in the budget you will see the fiscal deficit or the government is making mechanism uh, where the money will be spent and where the government will get revenue. So, that is in that, but uh, yeah, about the uh, about the interest rate or about the changing the RBI policy. So, that is the side effects on the exchange rate and the housing market of our country. Because if the interest rate will be higher, so naturally housing market that will be affected also. So, if suppose lower that is also affected because uh, if higher that is a negative impact and if the lower that can be the positive impact on it. Uh, strong political dimensions to changing tax rates. Sometimes the government suppose the elections are due or 
some to change popularity government wants to change popularity so they are making changes in the tax rates regarding to give the benefits to people or regarding to enhance some productive activities so tax rates are changed in both the tax rates you can say direct and indirect mostly dependent from the political uh, this is mostly independent from political process so there is no any political infer uh, interference because that is uh, governed by central bank only and fiscal policy is governed by government fiscal policy in india what are the success parameters we have discussed the objectives so we will see how these success param parameters can be achieved through the objectives the specific purpose of fiscal policy if you see the success mantra of that about the resource resource mobilization ki resource ko kaise mobilize kiya jaye how the vast resources can be uh, mobilized or that could, uh, that could be possible due to rapid economic growth in the various fiscal policy announcements a part of the government revenue has been used for development purposes efforts have been made for additional taxes both direct and indirect for raising more and more funds so uh, government takes taxes and by making the resource mobilization one part is uh, used for the rapid economic growth the resources can be mobilized and other part that is used for the development purposes the government spending uh, revenue and the government is also uh, imposing the additional taxes on the people both the direct and indirect how so through the direct and indirect taxes government is raising more and more funds economic growth a major proportion of budgetary resources of the government have been allocated for development purposes a large part of public sector investment has been on the development of basic and heavy industries for example power generation transportation and communication through development expenditure the government has been successful in developing an infrastructure which was necessary for rapid economic growth so government makes provisions so how the development as the infrastructure for the uh, successful uh, enhancement of or uh, developing the infrastructure so these infrastructure that is giving more and more opportunities for the heavy industries also for the power generation for uh, transportation and the communication and more and more people they will be attracted and then the speed of economic growth will increase and if the speed of economic growth will increase certainly the development of the country will also be increased and it will increase the or it will enhance the economic development also promotion of expenditure the government of india initiated varieties of development programs rural electrification integrated rural development program agriculture and community development program drought prone area program for creation of employment opportunities in rural area similarly the government has also taken up the self employment schemes just like msme some startups with the view to provide employment to technically a nullified persons in rural area so the expenditure is promoted in such a way that so that can increase more and more employment opportunity in rural area some enhance some some develop uh, self employment development scheme or such type of the programs which are uh, which can increase the speed of economic growth as well as development in rural areas equitable distribution of income so to reduce the inequalities among the people inequality of income among people with a view to achieve the objective of social justice the government has resorted to progressive tax system progressive tax ka matlab higher income group ke upar zyada tax aur lower income group ke upar kam tax under which taxes at higher rates are imposed on the personal income of person belonging to affluent society the government has also imposed heavy taxes on luxury goods the government on the other hand has also given subsidies and number of tax concessions to small traders and manufacturers however the result of the fiscal measures have not been much increasing in this regard to so, equitable distribution ke andar kya hai 
कि जो छोटे छुट छोटे जो ट्रेडर्स हैं स्मॉल ट्रेडर्स हैं उनको सब्सिडी दी जा सकती है कंसेशन दी जाती है जो स्मॉल ट्रेडर्स और मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं और लग्जरी गुड्स और जो हायर इनकम पर्सनल या जो हायर इनकम ग्रुप है उनकी पर्सनल इनकम के ऊपर क्या लगाया जाता है हाई टैक्स रेट जो हाई रेट्स लगाए जाते हैं टैक्सीज के सो दैट द इनकम का जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हो वो इक्वल हो अमंग सोसाइटी एंड पीपल स्टेबिलिटी Uh, the government has extend, uh, extensively used variety of measures for fiscal policy to tackle inflation pressures on the economy whereas on the other hand the government raised the rate of direct taxes on the other hand widely used public borrowings but the anti inflationary effects of the taxes have been more than offset by increase in indirect taxes and increase in public expenditure तो स्पेसिफिक पर्पज सरकार का क्या होता है कि क्या की जाए स्टेबिलिटी की जाए इस तरह के फिजिकल पॉलिसी मेजर हों जो इन्फ्लेशनी प्रेशर को क्या करें टैकल करें उसको कंट्रोल करें या उसको स्टेबल रखें बिकॉज क्योंकि दूसरी एक तरफ क्या करती है सरकार जो डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस के रेट को बढ़ाती है सो दैट लेस मनी यूज ऑन कंजम्पन और दूसरी साइड में क्या करती है जो जो पब्लिक बॉरिंग है जो सार्वजनिक जो उधार ली गई है उसको उसको खर्च करती है और जिससे क्या है कि जो एंटी इन्फ्लेशनरी जो है इफेक्ट्स जो टैक्सेस के वो क्या है कि वो वो उससे क्या होगा कि पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर बढ़ेगा तो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अदर कम्युनिकेशन अदर फैसिलिटीज इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन इज दैट विल बी देयर तो इस ये भी क्या करते हैं उससे क्या होगा कि जो इंडायर टैक्सेस है उस वो भी उसमें भी बढ़ोतरी होती है तो इसलिए सरकार का काम रहता है कि स्टेबिलिटी मोर एंड मोर स्टेबिलिटी That must be generated so that more and more people they can be benefited and uh, specifically because when the higher prices will be there, so lower income group people they are affected. So thank you. Contact me if you have any question and query. Thank you very much. Like and uh, share this video and subscribe my channel, Professor Santosh Nandan. Thank you very much.